right, well, we caught up with Scooter Tramp Scotty again for the third installment in the trilogy of Choosing Freedom, Nosy Beagle Interviews. How's it going, Scotty? All right. Nice sunny day, yeah. We're here in northern Georgia, and uh, Scotty's visiting one of, his, uh, one of the folks who keep up with him here. So I'm going to ask a question. It's kind of timely of what's happening in the world today, and we're just going to go with it. So... As most of you probably know, Scotty's lived on the road now for about 25 years, full-time, off his motorcycle. And I thought it'd be a unique perspective to ask someone who has lived like that what they think about all of these um, major changes that are happening in our society. And, and um, what's your thoughts, Scotty? That's a touchy subject, ain't it? All I can tell you is what I've seen. This is, this is America, or at least it used to be. <laughs> and uh, I believe in the Constitution, and by there, there's freedom of speech. By that document, there's freedom of speech. And that means that you have the right to see things how you see it, and I have the right to see things how I see it. And I've, I have friends who have opposite political ideas, and they're still my friends. That's their right, and this is my right, and I, I like that. So I'm just going to tell you what I think about it here, what I have seen, what I've watched. Okay, now there's a whole lot of talk about what's going on um, with this illness thing. And I don't believe or disbelieve any of that. A lot of it's contradictory. So all I'm going to talk about now is events that we all know that happened, that we watched happened, and I'm going to put them together and in a row, and we'll see what you think, what your conclusions are. I can tell you what mine are, okay? The first of which was it was back in 1991 that I watched J.B. Sr., the president, on the TV talking about the New World Order. A new partnership of nations has begun, and we stand today at a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis in the Persian Gulf, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity to move toward an historic period of cooperation out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. And this was going to be a one world government, and uh, I guess it would be one, one guy or a group of guys that kind of ran the world, and this is generally never good for the people below them. And I thought, well, that's pretty far out. But, you know, it's a pretty far out idea. But if you look at history, what you see is it's not far out at all. It's been going on forever, man. The Mongols tried to do it. The Romans tried to do it. The Nazis, the British almost pulled it off at one point. Um, many countries are occupying countries around them. There's always guys trying to expand their power. So I, I thought, well, you know, it'd, it'd be probably less likely that it wouldn't happen again. So... You know, recently I went and I YouTubed that just to watch this speech again. And what I saw on there was that also had Richard Nixon talking the same thing. And the interesting thing he said, he said that this would start, that they would make this happen and that this would start by the U.S. taking over oil-bearing countries around it, which is what's happened, right? Okay, so I saw that back in 1991, okay, since then... We had, the world was supposed to end in 2000. I didn't pay any attention. 2012, the Mayan calendar, I was like, yeah, well, we'll see whatever happens. But what happened was, was when 9-11 hit and I watched the towers came back, come down, that was a big deal. Because I had watched documentary on controlled demolitions before that, found it very interesting. And when they came down, I knew instantly. Well, I knew, I could see it, that they were demolitioned. And uh, I did research on that. And that one, there's no theory in that one. That's facts. Almost everybody do it. My Facebook is maxed out at 5,000 people. I put on there one day, who thinks it was towers and who thinks it was, dem or who thinks it was planes, who thinks it was demolition. I got over 200 responses. Three of them thought it was planes. But the bottom line is, is what you have is you got three, two planes, three buildings. I had a friend just, and, and then there's all kinds of other evidence, all kinds. And I researched it. I saw a lot of Americans didn't think it was important, I guess. But I had a friend of mine just recently, and he had never checked it out. I says, hey, man. I says, get on your little phone there and pull up a video of a controlled demolition of a different building. And he did. 
And he said, look at it. He said, it's the same thing. I said, yeah, you see how they did it? They blew the pieces out like this. They blew out floors. That's why it came down. If you bring up botched demolitions and watch those, things that went wrong, there's one of them where they blew the bottom out. The building fell like it was, it was like dropping a pencil. It hit the ground and then it fell over. Fortunately, it wasn't in the middle of the city. So that's how they did it. So what that means is our guys did it. Um, no outside, nobody from outside could get in there to wire these buildings like that. That means our guys did it. That means our guys killed almost 3,000 of us in one of our own cities to perpetuate their agenda, which we didn't know what that was until afterwards, which has turned out to be the endless war. Okay, plus that gave us the um, Patriot Act, which also squeezed us, the people. So that expanded power over these oil-bearing countries and over the people. The chief of the department yelled, the tower has come down. And uh, when I saw that, to me, that was a big deal. That's the biggest event that happened in my lifetime. And in my mind, immediately, what I saw is these, we've gone over the edge. This is no longer America. We've gone into Stalin stuff. Okay, so in my mind, they became the mortal enemy of the people at that moment when they did that to us. And then after that, they started the support our troops propaganda which didn't exist before that. People go with propaganda. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people, there's still a few people who don't believe the towers were blown, but those are only the people who don't want to believe it. You see what I'm saying? There was a great man who once said, it is much easier to con a man than it is to convince him he's been conned. But in this day and age, this is no time for false pride. This is time to find, try to find the truth as you see it. So, um, after that, they needed the boys to get in the warplanes, because they're not going to do it, to get in the war machines. And so they started this support our troops propaganda, and people went with it. Now, half of my friends are either military or retired or ex-military. I got no problem with this. But these guys got in the planes. They go, rah, rah, we're defending our shores. And I'm like, guys, we're not defending our shores. We're invading other countries and occupying them. That's... Like, can you see? Like, you have eyes, right? You can see that's what we're doing. You're like, no, we have terrorism here. I'm like, they started telling us we have terrorism here in the U.S. And I'm like, I've never heard of a car bomb going up. Terrorists use car bombs constantly. That's the main thing they use. I know, I know people that are from countries like that, and that's what they use. I'm like, there's no car. I've never heard of a car bomb going off, off here. And nobody ever told me. I've no, always known the Muslims have had problems, right? We've all known that. But nobody ever told me they were a threat to me until they wanted to go over and invade their countries. Do you see what I'm saying? And so now all of a sudden they're a threat to me. And I'm like, I, you know, I have, a, I have this really bad habit of going with what I see and what I hear from first in the first person. I don't believe what I'm being told. Okay, so we had that happen. And then later on, now, well, we all know they've been trying to get the guns away from us. And I'm glad to see the Americans at least being very resistant to that. Um, the Second Amendment was put in there, as everybody, as, as everybody should know, for one reason only, and that's because those guys who wrote the Constitution knew that, I have a copy of the Constitution in my bike, okay? They knew that governments eventually become corrupt and they wanted the people to be armed in case we ever had to fight our government. As a matter of fact, it's written in the Constitution that government is only supposed to stay small, they're supposed to serve the people. They don't have that much power. They're supposed to support the militia. Originally, this is how it was written. Suppo supposed to support the militia and train them to be able to take them over. Like, that was ever going to happen, right? But anyways, that's what's in the Constitution. So, they've been trying to get the guns away. Now, one of the things we saw that I watched was the school shootings. And they were, those started off as legitimate and all that, and I don't know about them, and there's all kind of rumors, and I don't buy all the rumors, but there is one. I forget which one it is. I need to look that one up. But I watched it when it happened. They, um, it was the one where they had the cop standing outside the school door on his cell phone, and it was obviously he was told to stand down because he never went in the building. Yeah. Hey, Scotty, I'll just say this really quick. Um, I've had some experience with the school shooting subject, and um, that one will get videos banned almost instantly off of YouTube. So... 
um, we won't be specific about that, but I think people will understand what we're talking about. Do I talk about what happened in it? Um, yeah, but just in a real general way, because uh, you know, we're talking about um, the school shootings part. I've, I've had, let's just say I've had some experience on YouTube on that subject. <laughs> what happened in this particular one, and what got me with it, was they had a, one of the teachers testimony she said she was in her classroom on the floor behind the desks with the rest of the kids and she was watching a guy through the open door in full military regalia shooting down the hall okay and then we had a uh, um one of the students she was standing with the guy accused of this and she said because she knew him she's talking with him and they're hearing shots in other parts of the school so she knew that it was that she figured there had to be two shooters Okay, but what got me was when they arrested the kid because it was 40 minutes after the shooting and I watched the footage that they took and this kid was face down in the grass and he was doped up, man. This, this boy was loaded and he, they run over there all tough, grab him, handcuffed him, you know, and picked him up and this boy could hardly walk and they drug him over and threw him in the cruiser and when I saw that, my thoughts were now they're in our schools killing our kids. Okay, the yeah, scenes... I'll, I'll just add this really quick, um, guys, that... To support what Scotty's saying, um, a lot of people already know this, but some don't. Some are very resistant to this type of um, perspective. But uh, there was a certain shooting that happened up in a northeast state. Let's put it that way. That um, the initials are S and H, and it's worth looking into that one. It's been completely wiped off of YouTube, but you can go to BitChute and other social media platforms and find um, all the research people did back when it happened and um, it's it's undeniable that that was an orchestrated event and uh, it very much plays into the deception that we're finding with our government today so. so what I'm seeing is with these events we've gone over the edge it looked to me like we it looks to me like we've been taken over by an actual criminal enterprise and I've never seen anything like this in my life. I'm 60 years old. And um, so I thought, now they're killing our kids. And to try to get the guns away, that's extreme. That's extreme. Okay? And so then was the next event I saw that happened later was, first I'm going to talk about, some of you may know, one of the main things that brought Richard Nixon down, that's the Watergate thing, but... When I was a kid, the people believed in the American government. They thought they were on the ups and ups and everything was legit. And that changed in Nixon's administration. And what happened was he had a bad habit. They made a movie about it recently. I went and saw it. It's not very old, but he had a bad habit of recording every, all the conversations that went on in the White House. And there was somebody got a hold of those tapes, smuggled them out of the White House, got them to the Washington Post. The Washington Post then began to transcribe them and print them. The White House got a hold of the paper and told them, hey, we're gonna put you in jail and close your operation down. The woman who owned the Post, she had to make a decision. Back then, see, um, media and government were separate, okay? And so government was actually afraid of what the media was gonna do. So that woman had to make a decision whether she was gonna risk going to jail and losing her business, but she decided the people needed to know about this and she continued to print it anyway. And that's one of the things that changed everything. Ever since then, nobody's believed that it's all on the ups and ups. Okay, so what happened in recent times, this was just some years back in the 2000s, I watched this one happen. I watched this stuff on network, this was on network news, is government took over the four major news companies in the country. So now the media belongs to the people who blew the towers. Does that make any sense? And so I don't listen to any of that. So what I've seen is this new thing is brilliant because it's kept the people separated. I'm not sure exactly what the outcome is going to be. Um, it's managed to keep the country closed down. We need to make sure that everybody continues to let us know where those folks are. If you've observed recurring violations of the safer at home order, please continue to let us know. You know the old expression about snitches. Well, in this case, snitches get rewards. We want to thank you 
for turning folks in and making sure we are all safe. Of biased and false, false news, news has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets are exactly what people think, and this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Now that's all facts. We had those guys talking about the, the New World Order. We had the towers. We had um, trying to get away the guns from us. As you know, they've been adamantly trying to do that, so we can't fight back. And they've been, um, and then we had them take over the media. Propaganda is very important. Look what it did for Adolf. And people do what the television tells them to do. They really do. And so we've had all that leading up to this. Now we have this big bomb going on here, which is suspending rights. I have been, for the first six days, I kept myself isolated, but I went out every day and I talked to every public worker uh, who's in a gas station, a restaurant, serving food. Um, Walmart workers, I asked them all, do you even know anybody who's sick? And it's extremely rare anybody does, right? I'm taking my own, I believe my own eyes and ears. I've gone to multiple hospitals all over the place and the parking lot filmed the empty parking lots. The parking lots, man, just even, even in Houston, you know? And so I'm like, where is this thing we're talking about? Now I know a few people who've been sick and there've been a few people that have died. So I don't think it's not real, but it certainly isn't what this is. Now this is my speculation. There's lots of speculation on this. And, but this is, this is speculation. It's not the facts of what happened. My take on it is, is that in order to bring the people to their knees, China's already back to work. In order to bring the American people to their knees, they need to um, break us because we're not already used to being enslaved. You see what I'm saying? And how it was done during Stalin's time and Adolf's time is the people were hungry, they were starving, the economy was real bad. And they, they said, we got a new idea. And if they can keep these businesses closed long enough, and when we get to the place, and they're trying to cut off the meat now, right, the food, and if we can get to a place where we are hungry enough, we will be ready to accept a new deal. That's my personal take on it. The rest of it, you can add it up for yourself. A lot of people are like, what's going on? You know, and maybe those things will help put it into perspective for you, maybe not. But those are factual events we know that happened. And since the very first one, I've been watching this. And I've put them together as they've happened. And so your conclusions are yours, mine are mine. I'm not going to argue with anybody about this stuff. This is just as I see it, and maybe you see it the same. The only way I see that we even would stand a chance is if everybody opened up their businesses, went back to work, and when the authorities showed up, the whole neighborhood showed up with their guns and said, you boys better leave. But that's not going to happen. So as far as I can see it, I think we're doomed. If they give us a break, they'll be back with it. They'll be back. I don't think this is going to end. I think this is, there's, most people know at this point that there is an alternate objective. You know what I mean? There's an objective to this and it's not what they're saying it is. And that's how I see it, guys. You can see it how you want. And uh, that's all I got to, that's enough. That's what I got to say on it. Okay, Scotty, I'm gonna just have one more follow-up question here in just a minute. I'm just gonna turn my phone off so I can reboot the card. One second. Okay, Scotty, I was just wondering, you know, you you probably have no intention of coming off the road and becoming a farmer or going to get a 40-hour week job or something like that. So, you know, you're probably still going to be a drifter, I imagine. And under these new circumstances, you know, you probably give it some thought to how you're going to go forward in life and, and still be able to do it. I don't have any answers. That nurse we were talking to in the uh, gas station the other day, she, she, that was just four days ago, three, four days ago. She was in her blues and they're not allowed to talk to us so I could not film her. I've tried to talk to other people in the hospital and they can't, they'll lose their job, she told me, but she talked to us privately. And she's, she's saying they're getting paid for each patient that comes up with this stuff and so they're labeling them before they even get the tests back, the test results back. She says, it's scary. She says, um, 
she was afraid. You remember that? And she was looking at us like, what are you gonna do? We don't, me and my husband don't know what to do. There's something really wrong here. She is maybe not from a big city, but she's yet to see an actual case. But um, I don't know. And I looked at her and she looked at me with pleading eyes. What are you gonna do? What, what can we do? Where can we run, you know? And I don't know. I am fortunate that I am 60 years old. I've lived in, I don't believe democracy, it doesn't seem as if democracy is gonna last much longer. Maybe it will, maybe I'm wrong. I wanna be wrong. If you have an opposite opinion, I want you to be right and me to be wrong and you can later tell me I'm an idiot and I'll smile and be happy about it. But this is not what I'm seeing, okay? And so it's, it looks like democracy may be coming to an end here. I uh, dated a girl down in Mexico this last winter. She's 63 years old, cute little thing. She's from Lithuania, which is right next to Russia. And she grew up under communist rule. And, and it was interesting to talk to her and ask her what it was like. I still keep in touch with her. And um, she said, you're assigned your job and you either work or you go to prison and you can't get ahead because if you come up with an idea that makes enough money where you can buy a car or something, they take it away. She said, this is why it will never work. Now, this is the communism thing, right? She says, because people are lazy. They just don't work. They just do the absolute minimum they can. <laughs> she says, and nothing gets anywhere. But I don't know what I will do. Some of the people I know are fortifying their homes with solar and gardens and getting animals to try to become more self-sufficient. I was in a dollar store recently and uh, two women were screaming at each other over a bottle of rubbing alcohol. And when I got, they left, and when I got the counter, I said to the girl, well, that was pretty outrageous. And she says, that ain't nothing. She says, we've had fist fights. So what happens, what does the breakdown look like when the food runs out? This is rubbing alcohol, man. I mean, it could be toilet paper, you know what I mean? What happens? So I don't know. I feel fortunate to have lived through some of the best years this country's had. I was born in 1960. I don't have a real plan. I don't. I have some ideas, but I don't know. I'm not gonna get into those, some ideas of what I personally may do. But I don't know how long a person can hold out. It's, it's the scariest time I've ever seen. It looks like life as I've always known it is about to end as it, as it was. And I want to be wrong. But if you, if you add up the facts, the chances are higher than I'm not. You always got a place to come up in Michigan. You know that. Six months of winter. I know. <laughs> but you're always welcome.